Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. Basically, I want to walk you through a grade of mine where I break everything down, show you exactly what I did, just so you can get a little bit of an idea of how a professional colorist might work on something. Some of you may or may not know, but I've been a colorist for over 10 years uh, for Beambox Studio in New York. I've graded over 50 feature length films and I've graded hundreds of short form projects for all kinds of companies from HBO to Google to Under Armour, ESPN, and tons more. So this, rather than going through and grading it in real time, which usually takes forever, and I find most people, you know, find it a little bit boring and don't want to spend 45 minutes to an hour watching a video. Instead, I graded it ahead of time, and I'm just going to show you step by step what I did for this grade. Um, but first off, I want to go over, you know, a little bit about the footage. It's definitely, um, footage looks good to begin with, but it is very compressed files. Um, it's H.264 files, which are a little bit of a problem. It makes things a little bit harder to do. Um, also, the footage is not shot um, flat or log. So you'll see a little bit of, you know, what can be done with footage that's not totally flat, totally log as well. And then the look that was wanted for this is definitely something that's more on the prettier side, that's a little bit, you know, very natural, organic looking, a little bit cinematic, which you hear all the time with every single prompt you might get for a project. And basically something that looks very light and friendly. It kind of matches with the footage. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right in. Okay, so here we are. And just to get started, I wanna show you, this is the scene here and we have our the note tree that I created um, to show you. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna go through each one of these nodes and try to explain what was done for each one. Okay, so the first thing I did on this note here, which I just named base, is I just did a basic correction and I just made adjustments to the lift, gamma, and gain, which is a typical thing. And that initial adjustment looks like this. There we go, and I'm going to go before, after, very basic adjustment. And then from here, what I did is I called this highlights, and I did this one in the HDR adjustments just so that I can uh, select very specific part of the image because, like I was saying before, the prompt for this is that they wanted a very kind of pretty, natural, organic, kind of cinematic look to it. And these highlights here seemed a little bit too bright for me. So what I did is over here in the HDR highlights, if you click and hold here, now that it's on, you can see that if I click and hold on highlights, it shows you what part of the image was affected. And what you can see is just the sky there in the top left, the reflection in the water, the highlights in the leaves, you can see there. And again, this is the before and after. Before, you can see it was a little bit brighter over here. This is a little bit brighter and the highlights over here in this area. After, before, after. Okay, and again, color correction a lot of times is, you know, it's never really a single node where you're gonna see this dramatic difference. It's building on small details that by the end, you end up with a great looking product. Okay, so again, I've just done the base the highlights, before, after. And then from here, what I did is again, in the HDR window, um, color wheels, I just very slightly tweaked the contrast to kind of bring a little pop out of the image. And then also here in the curves, I adjusted the low soft. And for those of you that don't know what the low soft does, it basically takes the darkest shadowy blacks of an image and it will lift them up just ever so slightly but rather than doing just like a very hard raising of the shadows it adds a more natural organic roll off of the image and so before after and then i'll go into full screen so you can see it a little bit better so before after you can see that before it kind of pops out the contrast a little bit. And then also to make up for that contrast pop where the shadows tend to drop, that's what I did the low soft for to kind of raise them and create a slightly 
you know, not a very heavy thing. It may be actually a bit tough to see over the compression, depending on, on your speed and the resolution of your monitor and things like that. But just to raise the shadows a little bit, give them a slightly kind of creamy look to them before, after, before, after, and then moving on. And so far you can see the image building. So this was an easy one, it's just the trees. I just wanted the trees to pop. There you go, before, after, before, and after. And this I did simply by going into the curves, going into the hue versus saturation. I selected different parts of the trees and the greens, and then I just simply raised the saturation. And then from here, we made an adjustment on the dress, just to make the dress pop a little bit more. This one's easier to see, before, after, before, after. You can see the image kind of coming together. And that was simply by keying the dress, applying a little bit of this blur radius to blur out the uh, key, which, there we go, and then also denoising and here we go, you can see the parts of the dress that I wanted to bring out, just kind of this area here, just so it kind of adds a little contrast to it. And again, before, after, before, after. Okay, and then we're moving along. And then also the way that I brought that up is besides the keying, I also drew a window around it, and that is actually tracked a little bit. There we go. But that's basically it on the dress to get that effect. And then the next one after this were the skin tones, but also the dress. Uh, to me, it kind of had a little bit of a green, or at least on my grading monitor, um, a little bit of a green tint to it. Actually, this is the before, after. You can see the her skin tones getting a little bit more pink, a little bit more natural. You can see how it's kind of washed out and has that green reflection on her skin before, after before, after. And that's what, again, king, which I also added to the dress because it would naturally spill onto the dress as well. And it was also a thing of adjusting the hue towards the green and towards the magentas in the HDR color wheels, as well as a little bit of the uh, hue adjustments in the primary color wheels. And the reason I did both is because the primary color wheels tend to be a little bit more aggressive. That was to kind of give that initial push. And then I used the HDR color wheels here to kind of finesse and fine tune her skin tone a little bit. Um, and then moving on. And then from here, it's kind of where, you know, these adjustments here were kind of shaping the image, doing initial adjustments. And then here's where I kind of started adding a little bit more of a look to it. Um, and it was basically just warming up the image. This one's pretty easy. It may seem pretty heavy handed at first, but once you actually see it play in sequence um, and then kind of get away from it for a little bit and come back and see it with fresh eyes, this doesn't come off as heavy as it does now. And again, this is kind of, it was here, kind of green, muted, uh, doesn't have as much of a look to it. And then after, and you can see this is the next shot, which doesn't have anything on it, but before, after, that's pretty simple. And again, that one was simply boosting the color temperature a bit in the HDR color wheels because it has a little bit more of a natural organic look to it. And then for the sky, I added an OFX plugin called Aperture Diffraction, um, where it kind of I wanted to kind of bring out the skies. You can see kind of, or really not just the skies, but any sort of highlights that are in the image to give them this kind of like softer, creamier, frosty glow to them. So this is the before, this is the after, and that's pretty obvious, you know, before, after, before, after. And again, it's not just a sky, all these little highlights and even on the skin and the water, it's not as noticeable because it's kind of, you know, is the most obvious one, but it also happens all over the image to add a slight softness to it. If I do it here, before, after, you can see it's kind of adding that little before, after, before, after, and really all over the image. And you can see it's starting to develop a nice look to it. 
And again, no grade here. But if I just turn everything on, and so here you can see we have the full image. If I turn everything off again, this is where we were. And that's with everything on. You can see how kind of lifeless and flat it looks. And then after, there we go. And then I wasn't quite done yet after doing the sky there. I then went into the timeline node and I added a little bit of what was 35 millimeter grain ISO 400. This is one of those things that you can really only see in full screen. Before, after, before, after. That's kind of obvious here as I move around before, after. I'm very zoomed in, so it's obviously not as harsh once it's playing back, but you can see before, after, because if I turn that off, and again, here we go, if I now just play this back with the grain on it, and I'm gonna let it cut through the next shots as well. You can see the grain a little bit there, how it's coming out. There we go. And then the last thing was just a very slight vignette, again, in OFX uh, that Resolve has, and that's basically applying a lens blur to the corners. So before, after. And it kind of helps boost that kind of organic kind of older film look to it, kind of like these imperfect lens kind of look where I just blurred the corners of this lens before, after. And this I applied to the entire timeline because I wanted this to go across all of the shots. And so now if I go here, you can see that all the shots I turned on the look. And now if we go to the beginning, and I'll play through this with the grain, with all the different nodes, and the blur. This is kind of the final product. And of course, I could keep going. There's other things that I would probably do. There we go. That's the end. And of course, there's other things that I would probably do, but I just kind of wanted to show you kind of typical grade on, say, something like a beauty product like this or something that's more stylized, that's more commercial. And so hopefully you got something out of that and I will see you all next time. Okay, so that was it. I hope you learned something. If you did, definitely like, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you wanna learn in other videos below because I do read those and I do follow those. Um, I'm always curious what you guys wanna learn. So uh, I'll see you all next time.